Hey guys, it's JP Dillon. I picked this up at the swap meet last weekend. And I know it's winter time and fans really aren't the thing right now. But I like weird off-brand ones. This is a, a happy home. Which is made by the uh, McGraw Edison Electric Company. Which also made uh, the Toastmasters that I have. It's a model 20137. Made in New Jersey. And uh, it used to be kind of a cool color. Although the paint looks like death. Price was right. So uh, we're just going to do a minor clean lube and start it and see how well it runs. And it's pretty easy to service these things. You really just take the front and back reels off. Uh, pop the blades off of the motor, take it apart, clean and lubricate it, and you're done. So, let's get the grills off and uh, then see what condition the motor bearing's in. Alright, so here it is with the front off. And this is what you don't want to hear. That's wiggling it up and down. That noise is bearing run out. That motor's trash. So, we can't use the standard machine oil. There's too much run out in the bearing. It'll probably end up, all the oil will leak out and it will chatter. So what we're going to do instead is just pack it full of high temperature ceramic grease. And that will probably be a, a play it till it dies fan. Uh, just because it's not worth my effort to rebuild or replace that motor. Not for the price I paid for it and not the condition it's in. But we'll still take it apart and we'll clean the garbage out and we'll get a better look at how trash the bearing is. Because when they get that bad, they've either got a bazillion hours on them or they were never oiled. Both could be true of this one. So, let's uh, get the blades off and let's get the motor apart and see what it looks like on the inside. If you're curious, the tool that you need to get this off is a 532nds Allen head. And these are usually on here pretty good. This one was no exception. And once you get this loose, you usually find that the blades are on the motor shaft pretty well, too. So, let's see how tight it is on here, if I'm going to need tools to get it off. Nope, this one's going to come off pretty easy. That's good. Yeah, that motor's just trash. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, so to get the motor out, uh, out, <clears throat> we have to take the grill off and do these three bolts. Then uh, we can get the halves of the motor housing apart. Curious about getting these out. This is an 11 millimeter, which I think is like a 7 16 something like that. And yeah, if you're wondering why I sound different, I'm getting over nasty cold, so. Not sounding all that great, although for the most part it seems to have left me. All the worst of it's over. Keep on your vitamins and minerals. Get lots of sleep and exercise. And you might still get your ass kicked by a cold. Okay. Let's see how much this wants to fall out of here when I turn this around. And as you can see, it's been dropped too. This has been abused. This is probably somebody's garage fan. After it started making noise, they demoted it to the garage. All right, so this comes off easy. We're basically gonna take off the remaining screws here and get the two motor halves apart. And we'll see what it looks like on the inside. All right, so here's a problem you run into sometimes. And that is, there's a bunch of crud build up inside of the bearing hole there and I had to scrape a bunch of it off to get to this point but it uh, it doesn't want to come apart so I'm gonna have to spray some penetrating lube in there and whale on it a bit with a mallet and see if I can get those two to separate so that obviously requires two hands and I'm gonna do that and then if we get it apart successfully we'll see the insides alright so all it took is a shot of some deoxid fader lube on the shaft to let it trickle down in there and as you can see we got it pretty loose and you can also see the horrid groove wear there on the bearing and the nice shiny spot there in comparison with the others if it'll focus but this is more or less trash this is 
we're just like I said going to clean off the old garbage pack it full of grease and put it back together uh, it's got a lot of hours on it and it's pretty much done so let me get some alcohol and uh, some high temperature grease I think I'm going to use high temp molly grease for things like wheel bearings and axles higher PSI strength and probably holds up better under heat not that ceramic doesn't but yeah whatever go big or go home now that I've got it cleaned off you can see how bad it really looks I mean that thing is just trash see what you'd be looking for this is bad wear you can see all the little grooves that have been machined and polished in there without oil over time uh, you'd want like a nice uniform clean looking surface but this is just trash so what I'm gonna do is is uh, I'm just gonna coat both the bearing in here with grease and then the bearing that it goes into uh, I remember to put that spacer back yeah I can't lose those otherwise you'll get front to back in plane it'll make a big thump when you turn it on and off so I'm just gonna liberally apply this and this should get me a couple more years out of this thing I'll probably just end up using it as a shop fan or something. And then we'll do the other side too. Trying not to get my carpet all full of grease. I'm just like I said we're just gonna coat it and then we'll come back in here and we'll coat this all up too because this is pretty much trash and then we'll put the motor halves back together and see how it rotates and looks from there all right so back together and in the housing that scary noise is gone now it doesn't have a great spin down time because it's having to wallow its way through the grease but uh, uh, let's plug it in here for a second All right. yeah, maybe it came unplugged alright well there it is running it's got a bad power cord I can kind of bend and twist this and it cuts in and out. So, might want to replace that too while I'm at it. So far, so good. Let's run it with the blades on it. Alright, here it is with the blades. Definitely hear the bearing run out there. Less if it's on uh, medium or low. So yeah, this one's pretty beat, but it runs. I think this one will just be a shop duty fan. I'll replace the cord on it. It's not too hard to do. All right. Mmm, smell that hot grease. 
So this one's just pretty much on its last legs. This will, when it wears out finally to the point where I can't even use it, then we'll get rid of it. So let's button it back up after I change the cord. So what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to do the full replacement just because this piece is brittle. This wiring is brittle up in here. I don't want to mess with it. I'm just going to splice into this. And you see that I have them staggered here, and that's for a reason. Is that way there's very little probability that the two wires can short out if there's any kind of abrading of the insulation or failure of the heat shrink that I'm going to put on here. So I'm going to do two layers of heat shrink, a uh, piece of heat shrink on each one of these wires to cover that, and then a final larger piece that's going to cover the whole shebang right up to the strain relief, and that will lessen the, the probability that there will be uh, a failure of the core that will result in a short circuit or a fire. Alright, so as you can see, I've got my wires soldered up together like that, staggered, and we're just going to slip the heat shrink over them so that we're covering the splices. And as you can see, I've got my bigger sleeve standing by here. So let's get the heat gun and put it all together. All right. And then what we'll do is get the larger of the two sleeves over top of that and then shrink all that down. And like I said, what we're doing here is trying to eliminate the possibility that any kind of pulling, tugging, or failure of this uh, failure of this mend will result in a short circuit. So that's done. And that's all nice and shrunk down there. The uh, shrink tubing also adds a layer of protection in the event that this wants to chafe against the grill. So that works out well too. Alright, so uh, on to reassembly and then we'll do one final test. Alright, so here it is all put back together. Let's do a final test. Definitely don't want to run it on high unless you want to hear that bearing whine. All the uh, metal stripped out. So it's hard to make this. Uh, rattling cage noise go away but it's alive it's definitely seen better days dropped manhandled run dry so it'll get a little more use out of it and then it'll probably hit the landfill but you figure it's 50 plus years old it did okay so far I lubed the switch up too since that was kind of sticky. Here it is, the happy home. Your symbol of quality. I gotta tell you, most of the plastic fans sold at Walmart for $20 wouldn't hold a candle to this, and they probably wouldn't last more than five years. The fact that this has lasted as long as it has, as abused as it has been, is remarkable. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this short video, and uh, there will be more stuff to come soon. 
Somebody just abandoned a bunch of crap on my doorstep, so I gotta sort through that and see what that is. Lots of electronic goodies. So maybe I'll decide to make videos about those too. In any case, thanks for watching.